Hey there. How are you, Niyama here? I haven't seen the red light come on yet, but I'm going to talk as though I have. <laughs> hey, yo, Niyama Shang here. And I got a, just a question that's been running on my mind. Whose job is it then? I just got done. Uh, well, let's say, say this here. I, I love being able to... Wow, it's just really interesting. I'm trying to see how I want to start this to be just to just get into what's really interesting. So I often find myself in a position where I am holding space for other people. In fact, uh, a few weeks ago, I held an event called Racism 20 during COVID-19. And during that experience, we had a chance to go and share um, our experiences of racism, regardless of where you were out in the world. And it involved a lot of space holding and involved a lot of listening to people uh, listen to people's stories and also listening to people who um, were at various phases and various stages of their um, their own journey to dealing with racism, to have to experience in racism and to like even just really being able to like acknowledge and see and that it was uh, how how it played out in the world. Uh, and so I, I find myself involved in a lot of different conversations now. It's been really interesting. I made a, a video a few days ago that was called uh, I'm an angry, uh, I'm an angry black man. And what's been really interesting is that since I made that video, it was very hard for me to say it on that during during that video. But since I've said it, I've been free and I can talk about it. I will admit I talk about the video as its own external thing. It's like I've made a video called I'm an angry black man, as opposed to I made a video expressing how I am an angry black man. There is a distinction. It's almost like this external thing versus me, but there is a, I've been feeling myself just feeling a lot more free, a lot more willing to have real conversations with people where I'm not holding things back. Uh, and a lot just, just in the conversation differently. And it happens like almost inevitably at some point in the conversation, uh, either during it or sometime afterwards, someone will say something to me along the lines of, and it's not your job to have to educate them. It's not your responsibility to hold the space. You don't need to be doing this, you know? Uh, and it's, it's come up often enough for me that, uh, uh, last week, uh, I was on a call with some friends and I actually ended up having like a stream of consciousness moment. I can't remember exactly what I said in response, but my general, if I, if I capture the general essence, cause this is how I feel, uh, the general essence was this, if it's not my job, then who the hell's job is it? Who is going to make sure that when people are in this space of wanting to go deeper and really raising their hands and saying, Hey, I, I, I want to know I'm, I'm newer or I'm a beginner or this still feels a little bit dangerous or I'm, I'm totally with it. And I'm, and I've only been able to take my own exploration, but so far, and I'd love to go deeper, you know, like who's there to, to, to support them through that. And I remember getting really emotional on this, this call. And it wasn't emotional of like, uh, like tears, nor was it anger. It was just like, I was just solid. I was like, well, who the hell is going to do it? You see, for me, I am someone who has, I kind of see myself as like in between, not in between, but you know, I, I consider myself an outlier, right? The two to 3%, when I talk about outliers all the time, I've been talking about myself uh, being a black man who's been consistently in that two to 3% uh, demographic, the statistic, the outlier statistic of somehow uh, in most things I do, uh, I am the one, one of the only or one of the few uh, this random statistic of two to three percent that continues to to be persistent throughout, and as such, I know a lot. Of, like my circles, my communities, my networks, and my friends are predominantly white, and so I hear often from people that that like ah, I finally can have this conversation. There's no one else in my world that I can really have this conversation with. There's no one else in this in my world that will be able to that like is willing to stay in conversation with me. There's no one else in my world where I can be this honest, this open and, and have this space to figure out like what it is that I feel and also be able to not just understand your experience, but actually be able to feel it such that I can figure out how I can make 
how I can move forward and how I can actually make an impact and a difference. So for me, I feel uh, I'm a bit flabbergasted. I was going to say I'm conflicted and all that because I think that was going to help ed- like lower the edge. But I think I'm a bit flabbergasted. I'm like, well, then whose job is it? Like, I personally don't have the th- like three plus years for you to figure it out on your own. I don't have like, I'm like, I need you to come on board as quickly as possible. I need you to be able to uh, go through under like and and get it, get it as quickly as possible. And it might happen like it might be go off and watch some some movies or go um, read some some um, some reports and such. But there's also the space of like, let's actually have a conversation. Let's actually have that conversation. And so I'm really interested I'm really, really interested in any of your thoughts around this. Like uh, this, I'm making a commitment to myself. I'm going to do my best to only hit record or only hit uh, live when there's something that I feel that's at risk for me right now. I, I'm in my grander practice right now is just to consistently be in riskier and riskier situations so that I can you know, really learn and, and build that into my nervous system to move forward this feels risky for me because it feels like like the calm i hear it from everyone it doesn't matter what the skin color is of someone what someone's race is it's just like i hear it. it's like it's not your job it's not your responsibility um and i'm like but in doing that are you because ab- okay this this goes along with it here i'm unpacking it in real time uh my thing is i'll go and i'll talk like since i hear it from so many people i'm like okay so then is it your responsibility? You know, like if I, if I'm saying I'm going to be, I'm down for this conversation, I'm here to help people move through it. Uh, and at the same time, it's not my responsibility, not my job. So my natural inclination is then to ask like, oh, okay, so you got this then. And they're like, no, if they're just coming to the table, if, they, if they're not here yet, screw them. And then that that to me feels, that's what made me make get on this uh, this video because I've been trying to reconcile that feeling where it's like, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You're just telling me that like there's someone here who's actively interested in like supporting me and understanding my plight and understanding how life is for me, such that they can go off. And these people typically are white people who, in my mind, are outside of the systemic oppression system in terms of being oppressed, but and actually have the ability to make changes, do things about it. Um, and rather than helping them get up to speed, we're actually putting our hands back and saying uh like go off and 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 educate yourself um there's a bit of this here that i'll say is uh a bit simplified i'm okay with that uh i just really want to get into the conversation around this i'm really curious about like what what what's what's happening what am i missing you know and i think part of it for me is that like i when i hear this i hear someone say what can i do now uh or like i want to know more and i want to understand more right and i think a part of me is like i hear them say that uh and i hear i hear like three i hear it on three different levels one of them is like uh i hear like i'm your friend and i want to make sure i understand what's going on for you i want you to know that like i don't know if i can do anything but i got you back so i hear it on that level right uh i also hear it on the level of like i want to go and do something like i'm i'm angry or i'm excited to do do something i'm riled up like this isn't right i'm going to go out and do something about it what can i do right and this like the problem the thing part of this also comes with like we have allies and we have what it what it means to be an ally and how we talk about being an ally and typically from all the experiences that i've had around allies it's like you look to the people who are being oppressed the people who are uh actually um being inflicted uh, upon and you look to them for their leadership and you help them the way that they're asking to be helped. So then that becomes really confusing to me again, because it's like, wait, the training says as an ally, you're supposed to go about doing it this way and not trying to just take on and saying, I know what the answers are. Uh, And then at the same time, it's hard to actually find someone who, who might tell you what that answer is completely. And then the third, I'm going to add two more. There's, There's, there's two more on this one, right? Uh, the third one might be, um, hey, I see this as an ongoing issue, and I'm not, ju- I'm not just trying to find like something I can just do right now and then be over and done with, right? I get that there's a lot of discrete different actions that I can take, 
but I get, but I also am recognizing that there's a whole system set to, to the against you. So how can I take a systematic approach to doing something, right? I actually just made a post about that recently, which was around uh, uh, time, treasures, and talents. And when I hear that, there for me, they're saying, what is my unique contribution to this here? How can I like become so like emboldened and so like ready to go do something that like I go back to my offices and I'm and I like and I demand that. You know, there are that more people of color are hired in in senior level roles, you know, uh, or I go off into I'm smiling here because I'm just thinking about some of the ways that like w I'm thinking about what would excite me, what would really what I would love to have like people do uh, after they come and have a conversation with me to kind of see just like just how like uh, pervasive the racism is. Right. Because it's something that's like. It's like throw a rock and it's there. I actually just got to, um, I'm in a, I, my energy is moving right now. So I'm going with it. Just got done talking to my dad and my dad and I were having a conversation and he was talking about like, it's like it's hard for people to understand like what it's like to go out and try and get a mortgage. And then they come and they say, you need to bring this back. And so you go and you bring it. Then you, then they say, okay, well now I need to go bring something else. And you go, you bring that. And then you're looking out there and you're going through all these hoops and you're seeing someone over to your, to your right there who just like, it's like, hey, you know what? We'll just, we'll, we can, we can get all that later on. Let me shake your hand. Here goes, here goes the, uh, here goes the mortgage you asked for. It's like everywhere we go, everywhere you go, it's, a, it's around, right? It's just more, it, and I can understand it from that perspective where it's like, how can you not see it? And I just, I just get super curious. I get super curious around like, is the approach of saying, hey, if you haven't seen it yet, you have to go off on your own and then try and find it. Um, is that really like supporting what it is that the end the end goals that we really want? I'm comfortable. I'm I, like, I'm actually actively looking for people to push back on me here. Uh, and I'm also really, I'm really looking for people to push back because I need to understand it. I don't have the luxury of this being a question that's just up in the air. I'm like, I need to get it. I need to understand this here because whatever else is, whatever needs to take place, let me know so I can like just address it. So I can address it. We can move forward and then like have people like basically accelerate this out because I know a lot of, I just, I don't know. I know a lot of people who care and who care about me. And it's a part of the reason why I'm like, oh, I need to be like, I need to make sure I, I admit that I'm a black man because without that, there there's there's um without being confronted with it we're not there there's spaces where there's not much more room for things to grow so i am curious i cannot see a single comment right now so please i'm hoping that uh y'all are writing comments y'all are letting me know here um i'm curious about it and i'm also just so willing to say like the whole inclusion space and diversity space and belonging space like it can be it can feel really dangerous like it blows my mind. I made this made this post maybe two and a half years ago, uh, where it was a Facebook Live of me just saying like, why does inclusion feel so exclusive? And it's like there's a there seems to be a right way to do it all. And I'm not a I don't know if I'm I know I know I'm not about it. I'm trying to like push myself back. I'm not about like the right way to get it done. All right, I'm about getting it done. However, however it needs to come. So. Trying to see if there's anything fresh that's in here. I have this have a, this. In, there is one thing that's fresh. I do have an invitation. My invitation is to push back. Let me know. Let me know what's going on. Um, my my. Oh, okay, Jamie. Thank you, man. Uh, I, I see you here. You're saying what is it that you don't understand? So what I don't understand is um, who like. My, what I don't understand is the core of it how does saying it's not my job it's not my responsibility it's not your responsibility your job to help someone go through a process of like really uh understanding and saying that i want to take something on in when it comes to racism or yeah with racism in particular um i don't understand how the response is so hand like hands offish uh it might be um there might be some various uh resources that are sent but generally speaking, uh, I, I feel like there is a there is a, a cap to when those resources are out. And I get it. Like if someone's coming out here and was asking me to if I was back working as a, an actuarial consultant and, you know, I had someone asking me, 
how what hey what do i do to fill up this cell and and what do i do now and what do i do now it'll get incredibly annoying i understand that i think my the place for me that i'm trying to really get in is like there's work to be done what is the work that needs to get done and how can we help how can we help support people through that work getting done versus leaving it out for uh for them to figure on their own I have a good friend. Thanks for asking that, Jamie. I'm thank, thanks, thanks for helping me to, to refresh that question there. Uh, I have a good friend that I was talking this over with the other day. And I was like, I was like, look, here goes the thing. As a black person, I do look to my white friends to be able to educate other white friends along the way as well. I, I, I look to my white friends to be able to, uh, to take on and take risks because they're typically in positions of, of not positions of power, but like just by by the nature of their their skin, um, they have they tend to have more power, right, and more privilege. Let's put it at least that way, more privilege. Um, and you know, there was there, we we came up in a conversation, and I was like, to me, I would love it if someone was organizing different conversations or looking to get closer with someone who clearly wasn't woke yet or had just recently become woke or was still exploring what what all that meant uh to become to like to be in this space and took it upon themselves to say hey welcome i see you're joining this conversation i know you might have a lot of questions let's let's jump in let's give you a chance to reconcile your thoughts here let's give you a chance to to to, to play this out in a space where you can say the dumb stuff, you know, and then like just have enough time to listen to yourself and catch catch yourself on your own contradiction, contradictions, for example. Well, I'm really proud of this person in particular because she like we left the conversation um, and it was like I didn't think anything. I, I expressed myself because I was in that state of confusion. Uh, and then she made a post on Facebook and she she reached out and she said, like, hey, there's like for people in my world you're a white person that's feeling this way if you're uh, a conservative that no longer like feels it's like that feels like you're questioning your like your conservative stances right now because of all the, that's going on and she just like she just opened the door for people who might be closer to her or people who might be able to engage in a conversation or more, more with her to have that conversation with her it's not her job but i feel like like that same person who is on the precipice, on the cusps of like coming in and being and saying like, I think I can make a difference or I think I'm gonna actually go through a path of change, now has an opportunity to be actually welcomed in. So I'll leave this here. I love to get your thoughts on, you know, when someone comes up and they're asking questions about, about racism, they're asking questions about uh, your experience as a person of color, a black person, um, and you and and they're asking for like how they can get involved or what they can do or whatever it is um if your response is typically well it's not my job or it's not that person's job to like educate you my question is whose job is it who will help this person and what is the help that that person needs and if you can and like for me this is more like it's i'm like Hmm, I need to figure this one out uh, because I'm, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to accelerate, accelerate having people be able to feel comfortable being who they are and feel comfortable uh, leveraging their privilege and power in whatever way to in whatever system they happen to exist in to be able to make whatever change that they can, because this thing is everywhere. This thing is everywhere. And. Yeah, at the end of the day, I want to make sure I'm doing my part to be a part of it all. All right, so I'm going to end this here. Would love to see your thoughts on it. Uh, this this is evolving. This is an evolving conversation for me. So I'm, you might see me come back here again with a little bit more refinement to to the questions. But I'm choosing to show up when it feels risky. I'm choosing to show up before I'm ready. And I'm and honestly just to keep open up space, opening up space for us to explore explore these these difficult topics and take on different ways of looking at it all all right hit me with it <laughs> and, and maybe i said it with it's not your responsibility <laughs> to, to be in it but like realistically i'd love to engage in a conversation with you all right all right
uh, leave, leave some messages. And if there's enough interest, maybe I'll, I'll set up some time for us to talk about it live, you know. Uh, and yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, Oniyama here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. And then go ahead and leave one of your insights from today's video in the comments below. If you're looking to take this deeper, you can go and watch another video or you can go to niyama.com slash tribe to get exclusive invitation to our tribe member only events. I'll see you soon.